Just because an animal is huge, a massive animal, does not mean that they are not a great pet. And I think that there are five options that might make fantastic pet reptiles that are also huge animals. So let's go over, in my opinion, what are the top five huge reptiles that also make good pets. I'm Adam, this is Pikachu, who's a ball python and not on this list. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Salcata tortoise. This is not a salcata tortoise. I don't have one. This is the only thing I have that looks even similar. He wants to bite me. Salcata tortoises don't usually do that. This is a Mississippi map turtle. Um, salcata tortoises are tortoises. They're, in fact, they're big old tortoises. Salcata tortoises can get up to 200 pounds. Although 100 pounds is much more common for a salcata, they are big. And by big, I mean that these things look like they look like boulders that are just moving about, eating grass and hay and whatever else you feed them in vegetation wise. And like a Mississippi map turtle, a sulcata makes a really great pet. Uh, I mean, if you have big area. That's the thing, right? I think all of these are gonna find a trend. Unless you've got the space, these don't make good pets for everybody. If you do have the space, these might be the best ones that you could have. And sulcatas, I mean, in terms of, imagine like, a cow with spurs on its thighs and a shell. That's what it is. It just kind of walks around, roaming around, eating your grass. These things are absolutely fantastic, really cool. And unlike Mappy there, who we put back, they don't need a giant water receptacle, just enough water to drink like a normal tortoise, but they need a land area, a really big land area. And it takes a little bit of doing because you're gonna need to be digging in the fence into the ground. Uh, if you have them inside, you'll need like a whole room basically, or at least a really big enclosure. And you're gonna need to make sure it's dig proof and make sure that they can't see out of it either. Because if they can see, if they see through the barrier, if it's chain link fence, that barrier will be no more very quickly. It needs to be a solid barrier like, I don't know, a full fence, like a fixed fence. So these guys, although they're not for everybody, I think of the tortoises, although they're the, only the third largest, these are the best large tortoise that you could possibly have and the fifth best pet reptile in the huge category. Number four, beauty snakes. This isn't a beauty snake, but just keep your attention. Beauty snakes are maybe one of the most beautiful species of snake that there are, especially when it comes to non-venomous. When it comes to non-venomous, eh, these are one of the most beautiful, for sure. They're really big, but slender. So I think that's what kind of separates them, where everything else on the list has a little bit of girth to them. If you grab them, you're gonna know about it. Beauty snakes are thin, but long. I mean, they do get sometimes up to 11 feet, more commonly seven or eight feet. But that's still a really big colubrid. And these guys will come from parts of Asia, Thailand, Vietnam, uh, Myanmar, Myanmar, however you pronounce it. Uh, so there's, it's kind of a really large range. And because of that, there's more than one type of beauty snake. Blue beauties are what I'm talking about mostly because those are generally considered to be the largest of the beauty snakes, but they're great snakes. And although some of them can be cantankerous, there's none that are going to likely kill you. Although they're 11 feet, these things, they're, they're thin right so they're very easy to control although they are fast and can be nippy as babies they're really great for a handling type of snake and what's really important to a lot of people is being able to look at your animal obviously and these guys are diurnal so not only are they diurnal but they're pretty active and they use a little bit of height if you give it to them so if you wanted something that was a display piece of display pieces something that was i don't know four by four by eight or something something like just massive something giant these guys will use all of that space where if you use that for something else maybe a tagu for example you need like ledges or something for them to get to different points in the the height of the enclosure where with a beauty snake all you need is i don't know a tree branch or something like that you can make it a little bit more elaborate looking the enclosure and they're going to use all of it so if you what your thing is to have a big thing big enclosure on the side of your wall with a really impressive animal in it i think a beauty snake might be what's for you now number three and probably the largest on the list burmese pythons this is a ball python. <laughs> I don't have a Burmese python, but this is very similar in terms of care requirements. I know it's really weird to say that a Burmese python that might get to 18 feet, 200 pounds, although more likely probably around 12 feet or 13 feet in captivity, 
And these guys are, you know, ball pythons, five feet, maybe six feet if they get really big. They've got really similar requirements. And I think that's why a lot of people graduate to Burmese pythons right from ball pythons, if they're looking for a larger snake. Not only because of the similar requirements, but because they come in a million color morphs, right? This is Pikachu, he's an albino, and albinos are pretty easy to find uh, for Burmese pythons as well. Not to mention granites and hypos, and there's a million different patterns and colorations. And that's something that's great about Burmese pythons, because if you want something that looks different, some like a wow type of snake, not only for size, but coloration and pattern, Nothing really beats a Burmese python, unless you want a reticulated python, but there's a reason we didn't put those on the list. Burmese pythons are generally considered the most docile, kind of big, gentle giant type of snake that there are. And that's why I included them in this list, and that's why they're on my bucket list of to finally, eventually get reptiles. I think berms, although bigger than maybe one person should handle, are really fantastic. And if you've got a second set of hands around, just in case, this might be the snake for you. I think, how many times do I say this is the snake for you, I wonder. But again, like every other thing on this list, they need a big enclosure because if it's gonna get 12 or 15 feet even, or if you get a monster that gets even bigger than that, they need, you know, quite a bit of space to roam around. You can't just have them in a really tiny enclosure. It doesn't really work like that, especially if you wanna give them an enriching life. But a Burmese python, once they get full size, like Pikachu is, aren't gonna fit in one of your hands. It's just not what you're in for. This is a snake that's gonna hug you back when you hug it. It's gonna hold on to you rather than you holding on to it. And although this is very rare, I feel like I gotta say it. These can be dangerous animals. Like, I'm sure there's lots of other ones as well. I mean, even a sulcata, if it bites you, it's not gonna feel good but no Salkata in the history of Everdom has ever strangulated, is that a word? Strangled their owner to death. Burmese pythons have been known to do this, very rare and usually almost always because of the human's fault. Not because of the snake, because of you. Because you smell like food and the snake thinks you're food. No snake in the history of the world has ever just jumped out of its enclosure, killed its owner, went back and read the newspaper that was lining its cage for substrate. It's not really how it works. But of all the snakes on the list, I think Burmese might be the most impressive. I think they can make really good pets as long as you know what you're getting yourself in for. Number two, Argentine black and white tag goose, which this is not, but this is. I don't have one of these because of the size thing. This is something that you've noticed, obviously, everything needs a really large enclosure, and tegus are no different. This is Diglett, my African fat tail gecko, and if, if you want something that doesn't look or act like a tegu at all, then African fat tails might, might be for you. But if you do want an Argentine black and white tegu, this is what you need to know, or need to consider, because if you want a full care guide, Professor Herp, my man, he uh, he did one up here, and that's whose tag we're gonna show throughout the portion of this video here. They're really big, right? They need a big enclosure. And most people keep them in something like an eight by four by four or eight by four by two if they give them less space up front, like overhead. It really depends. But what doesn't depend is the fact that they're impressive. I mean, no matter who you ask, these things are impressive. And these things are usually pretty docile and alert which makes them really great big lizards, right? Because I could put a monitor on this list. There's lots of monitors that are bigger than tegus, but I don't know of any of them that will just walk around your bedroom like this. I think that is the cool thing about tegus is they seem like they have these little personalities and not like a serial killer type personality, you know, like some monitors will have. Some monitors are just, they're really difficult to tame, although I don't think there's an untamable beast uh, in any species really. I think a tagu is really the opposite of that, is something that can be easily tamed, or at least if you put in the work. And what else are you going to get besides a tagu that is going to be this well behaved, this impressive, have a really cool varied diet, and also won't kill you, or, I mean, you might need stitches if it bites you, but if it does, it's probably just because they're hungry, like, look how, look how chubby this boy is. But the varied diet, I think, is something interesting, because a lot of, well, a lot of monitors are going to have a carnivorous diet are mostly carnivorous and although tegus will eat rats they also will eat vegetables and flowers and things like that so they have a very diet it's a little bit easier i think because you're not going to have to be feeding them chicken hearts if you don't want to that sort of thing and although this isn't a direct comparison with larger monitors i know that's what everyone thinks about if they want a tegu at some point, uh, should I get a savanna or a water monitor instead? And these guys could have easily been number one on the list. I just think that number one, which we'll get to in a second, is just a little bit easier for some people and doesn't need quite as big of an enclosure. These guys, although they're very cool, 
Berry Diet, very interesting to look at. And by the way, they're from South America, just to keep the theme alive of where these things are from. They will need a big enclosure. And if you live in a place like Texas or Southern California where you can keep them outside all year, Florida, then they, this might be the perfect lizard for you. Or if you just like dedicating a giant four foot by eight foot space on your floor, get yourself a black and white tagu. And number one, huge reptile on my list. Boas. Okay, so this isn't a huge boa. In fact, I have a larger boa, Franny, who you might have seen on the channel before. A Dumeril's boa. And if you're not familiar with them, I've done a whole video. Check it out in the corner of the screen here. These have the most beautiful pattern I've ever seen on any snake that isn't venomous, in my opinion. Maybe besides a rainbow boa. Rainbow boa probably beats them. But if that's not a good enough reason, and you want something that's even bigger than BCIs or BCCs, boa constrictor and Emperor, got it the right the first time, or boa constrictor constrictor. Emperors will routinely get to about eight feet. Uh, the boa constrictor constrictor is sometimes up to ten feet. Not really much bigger than that. So if you think a ten foot snake that's much larger around than both your arms put together, potentially, that is a pretty big snake in my opinion, and that might be a great option for you. Now, Dumel's boas, if you want something that's a big snake but smaller. They get to about this size. This is my buddy Sean at SNS Serpentarium handling his big seven foot female. They can get up to eight feet sometimes as well. I just have her out because she just ate and the other one thinks that she's about to eat. So I think it's my mocks. I'll cut a tortoise in the background there. But this is Franny. She's my six foot BCI. She's not going to get a ton bigger than this. She will get bigger, but by no means is she going to become a Burmese python or a rock python or reticulated python. But I just think boas are all around one of the best snakes that you can have. They're generally pretty docile most of the time. Um, as long as you get them from a baby or even sometimes you can get them as an adult and just tame them right down. They will always eat for you. They've got these voracious appetites. So that's really nice. It's not like a ball python. They'll just skip meals for no reason. And they come in these beautiful colors. True red tails, Surinams, for example, have a bright red tail. And they come in a bunch of different morphs and patterns, too. Now, this girl here, Dumeril's Boa, you're not going to really see them come in a bunch of different patterns or morphs or anything like that. Some of them will be a little bit more orange or yellow or whatever they're line bred for. But a BCI, you can get albinos, you can get motleys, you can get, there's a bunch of different ones. We could make this a morph video, but we'll be here until we die of old age. I just personally think that an animal that might be able to live its entire life in a 4x2 or a 6x2 for a really large in individual who doesn't need a crazy amount of humidity or temperature, it's not super hard to keep, and eats for you all the time, and it's fun to handle, and I think you get the point. The point is, just because an animal is huge doesn't mean that it is a monster or not a good pet. In fact, some of these make the greatest pets. A boa constrictor might be one of the best pet snakes that you can own. I'm very slowly turning into a boa guy. In fact, once I got that Dumeril's boa, which hopefully grows up to be seven feet or so, I don't know, I'm really turning into a boa guy. So maybe these animals are right for you. Do your research as always. I got this idea out of the comments section below, just like every video. If you'd like to see your comment or your idea become the next week's episode of Wicked Spicked Reptiles, leave it down there. Hit the like button, I really appreciate it. And that subscribe button, of course, as well. A special thank you to our patron supporters. Thank you guys so much, I really appreciate it. If you want to see some stupid bloopers or vlogs or get videos a couple days early, Patreon is the place to do it. We'll leave a link up for you in one of these corners here. And I think that's all the silly stuff I have to plug. So, because I do videos every Monday and Thursday, that means I'll see you on Thursday.